Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. Pretty excited about this one. Uh, got Coach Tamika Newman on with us. Uh, Coach Tamika, uh, she's been blessed and fortunate to achieve some really neat things. And I'm so thankful to have her on and share her story. So first off, Coach, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Let's get it. Well, let's dive into it. Uh, I know off air, we talked a little bit about your journey and your story, but if you don't mind sharing some of that with the audience so they'll know, you know, who you are and what it is you do. Awesome. Well, I am one of five kids born to my mother. Uh, very quickly, uh, grandparents took over the reins of raising me, uh, had the church home, school home lifestyle. Um, I when I was, yeah, <laughs> when I was 12 years old, uh, the creation of the WNBA sparked my sports interest. So I, I saw these women dribbling a basketball and I was like, hey, this is their job. I mean, they look so athletic, so powerful. I fell in love with it and then had a dream of, you know, wanting to be a WNBA player. Um, the volleyball interest got really interested in volleyball, the 2000 Olympics. Um, just kind of, hey, what is this? You know, this isn't church volleyball. And again, realizing these women do this for their job. So fell in love with sports. Um, just did middle school sports. We couldn't afford much. Uh, very late bloomer. Uh, was tall really early. So I was this height. I'm about 5'9 in like the eighth grade. Said, okay, you know, I probably can do this sports thing. Um, went to a high school that wasn't very competitive. And was really determined to change that. And so I was the only girl that walked the mile trek to my high school there to work out speed and strength with the boys. Yeah. Um, and coaches, you know, took a special interest in me um, because they could see that I really wanted to be something. Um, at that point, I just wanted to be somebody. Um, did not grow up in a household with a lot of achievement at all. Um, some of my aunts and uncles did not finish high school, teen pregnancies, including my mom as well, um, and then prison and drugs. So I was really determined to be something, was a part of a great church. Family spent a lot of time there. It's the first place I learned, I gained the confidence to get up and speak in front of people. Um, learned a lot of history there. Our church would take us on a down south tour to tour the civil rights museums uh, in you know Alabama, different historical sites in Mississippi, and went to Memphis to the Lorraine Hotel and uh, really got a lot from um, that experience. Um, so had this bright idea that I could do two sports. I, I didn't know anybody that had done it. I certainly didn't have the background and the training to do it, but worked really, really hard with the opportunities that I had and got a scholarship to Prairie View where I played basketball, and volleyball. Um, and college was a huge learning experience. It was extremely sheltered. Um, I was a really self-motivated kid. Uh, obviously, it took a lot of motivation to get there. I had very narrow focus, um, but I struggled to recommit to a new set of of goals when I got to college. And so that made the transition really hard, but I learned a lot about myself. Um, from college, went on to graduate school, graduated right in the middle of the recession in 2008. There were no jobs. <laughs> so it's was like, okay, go back to school uh, with the hopes of doing something in athletic administration. I actually went to college um, another goal of mine was to be the next Pam Oliver. And so I don't know if your listeners will know who that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was going to be Pam Oliver. So I got a degree out of the communication, um, communi School of Communication at Prairie View. 
And I actually, um, I was the first sideline reporter. We had a makeshift, you know, media team. I would stand on the sideline with a tape recorder with the USB um, portion and I'd get the pregame yeah. and I run it up the bleachers and the radio guy would put it into the pregame program. I get the interview from the both coaches and I'd go back and going into the half, I'd get his, you know, the coach's comments, coach, what adjustments need to be made. And I would run it up and they put it in the halftime uh, show. And then same post game, I run it up. They put it into the post game. Um, and it was, it was amazing. And so now they have a whole production team that does that. Yeah. But I opened my mouth and, and talked about my goal with um, our radio personality at the time. And he said, Hey, we're going to make it happen. So um Graduate school, uh, got into coaching, like private school, charter school, Mm -hmm. and then went on to coach 10 years uh, of high school, had competitive volleyball, you know, here in Texas, big time, 6A volleyball, and eventually burned out of that, needed a change, and started Green Grind Athletics. And Green Grind Athletics, um, on the consulting side, I do mental skills training, and I work with athletic departments to align the coaches to their, to the district or the the department's mission, its goals, its promise. Um, And then I coach female minority coaches, um, just giving them the schools, the the tools to be courageous and innovative leaders, um, creating balance in their life so they can not burn out like I did. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so my most recent experience with coaching was at Prairie View, my alma mater, um, where we had a lot of success, um, but ultimately decided that it was very time consuming. uh, And I wanted to very much so raise my own kid. I had helped raise other people's kids 14 years now. (laughs) And so that was really the determining factor. Um, I really enjoyed everything about being a college coach, minus the long bus trips. because We didn't have a big budget. Um, but yeah, so these days I am working with coaches through a course mm-hmm. and uh, live trainings and then speaking to students uh, and athletes um, and then promoting my books. So. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. You know, uh, off air, you said a couple of times, you know, like like our paths are similar, like we're doing similar things. And as I hear more and more of your story, you're right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> background, church, I mean, all of that. Oh, yeah. Is is very similar. I don't know if I was a good athlete as you were, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were. but uh the background as far as the growing up and the coaching experiences and understanding that uh you've poured into so many people but you know the people that you love most need to get that too uh oh, yeah. you know and making that shift and setting your priorities and having a balance that's important and, and as i hear you talk about you know all of the amazing things that you've been blessed and fortunate to achieve and be a part of um, i would consider all of that to be hugely successful so let's let's hit on success well what is your definition of success Mm, liking what you do yeah, and, and who you do it for. <laughs> um, what else for success? Uh, yeah, I think I'm liking what you do and who you do it for. Mm-hmm. So liking what you do and who you do it for. Well, yeah, me- I, I think it, if at any point you are resenting um, what you do, you know, even, you know, with coaching, sometimes I resent at the time that, that I had, to, you know what I mean? And, and I don't think you're going to be successful or feel successful when you, when you have that, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this. What do you think it takes to achieve that type of success? Betting on yourself. Come on. <laughs> Betting on yourself. Yeah. Um, Yeah, being courageous, uh, taking the leap of faith, um, the self-awareness. Mm. Yeah, the self-awareness is huge, you know, Un- understanding um, yourself. I-, I think the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can get to doing what it is you were here to do, 
<laughs> you know, just as I as I hear you say that about the self awareness piece, I think one word comes up for me, and uh, that word is um, boom. <laughs> I got a book. Hey, man, let's go. <laughs> you know, I think that uh man, that, that self-awareness piece is so crucial. And uh I, I interviewed one of my guys, co-authors of the impact of influence, David Chin. He said this, you know, we don't have to strive to conquer the world, we just have to strive to conquer ourselves. Ooh. Come on. And and within that, like you learn. Yeah, so much about the world, but what's most important is you learn so much about yourself and you put absolutely that's where I start. Yep, at in my course, I was a young coach that experienced a lot of success, but yeah. th there was the same issues every year, right? Um, and you know, I, I said, oh, these parents are different. All oh, these kids are soft. All the different excuses that we make. But after 10 years, and yes, I, I was in some crappy places. You know, there's some places they weren't great. Um, and volleyball had gotten a little bit nuts, right? Just yeah. because of the travel. And it's just very competitive. Mm -hmm. And um, after 10 years, self-awareness showed me that I, I was focusing on professional development when I should have been working on personal development. And so that's what I talked to coaches about. If I have been working on personal development, maybe I don't burn out because maybe I don't choose jobs that don't align with who I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I'm big on getting coaches to understand and be self-aware um, and understanding where um, they may, may be the hindrance to the growth where they're at. Um, so big on that. I start there. Um I wish I knew this 14 years ago. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, before we get off, if you don't mind sharing with the audience where they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love and, and get those books. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, let them know. So I am on Twitter. I'm at Coach No Excuses. Um, my website is TamikaNewman.com. That's where you can purchase books. Um, and then... For coaches, I have a Facebook group, <laughs> a coach redefined. So if they can find that, but certainly inbox me on Twitter on through the website, email me and I can see the link to join that group. I know it gets a little crazy. Mm -hmm. And then for Instagram at Tamika.r.newman underscore GGA. I know that's long. I need to change that. <laughs> I'm right. I'm making sure I get it down, writing it down. All right. Well, hey, again, I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Truly appreciate it. And I wish you continued success. Yes. And I wish your platform continued success. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. And thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.